While some people come to Crystal Cove for the beautiful views, spectacular nature, and tasty waves, the biggest draw of this state park is the geology. I mean, come on, it's in the name. In this video, we'll visit three locations to check out a reef, a cave, and a sort of volcano that show us why the rocks at Crystal Cove are responsible for its beautiful location. Before heading down to the beach at Reef Point, take a look off to the right. So you might notice that it's actually kind of flat here. What's up with that? The land here is flat because what you're seeing is called a marine terrace, a sort of fossil beach. Just as waves erode the beach into a flat region against a cliff today, the same processes flatten this area into a beach about 100,000 years ago. You'll notice the steep San Joaquin foothills behind us. Their presence tells us that there's been uplift, or the upward movement of rock, in this area. That same uplift pushed what was once the beach here out of the water, creating the marine terrace, and initiating the formation of the beach that you're going to visit today. If you don't believe me, look at the soil. In places, it's pure beach sand 80 feet above the water. You'll also notice that there's shell all over the place. So I'm just off the side of the path here and you look into the slope and you see all those little white specks? Those guys, let me see if I can zoom in here to make it more clear. Those are shell. Uh, that's pieces of shell that are eroding out of the soil here. Further proof that this was once the beach. Over here, check this out. Let me see if I can zoom in. Some white specks. I'm staying on the trail because I'm a good dude. You know, I'm not going to go off trail, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's shell there. Let's go over here. Boom, white stuff, more shell. It's everywhere. Now that you know about marine terraces, you'll notice them all over Southern California. On a day with good visibility, notice that the step-like profile of Palos Verdes is due to its marine terraces. Let's go down the steps now to see our first real rocks. What you're looking at here and throughout pretty much the rest of Crystal Cove Beach is the Monterey Formation. Notice the tar is stuck to the rocks here and in small patches along the beach. It's there for the same reason that there are oil derricks and wells all over coastal California. The Monterey Formation contains oil. As the Monterey formed during the Miocene about 15 to 5 million years ago, most of the stuff that fell to the bottom of the ocean was silt and clay that turned into a rock called shale. You can see that in the light-colored rocks of the Monterey. But mixed in with this sediment was organic material from marine organisms that died and fell to the bottom of the ocean. Under the right conditions, this organic material will heat up and turn into oil. Because oil is less dense than everything around it, it will permeate up through pores in the rock until it hits an impermeable layer where it collects, creating what we call an oil reservoir. The impermeable layers in the monitorization also have to do with the death of microorganisms, specifically diatoms. Diatoms are a type of plankton that uniquely build their bodies out of silica, the same material that makes up quartz and glass. When a large die-off of diatoms occurs, the high concentration of silica from their bodies transforms the surrounding sediment and only makes it into a hard, brittle rock called chert. It's easy to see how the hardness of chert makes a big difference in the landscape. Notice how the chert at the base of Reef Point extends into the ocean and makes, well, a reef. The hardness of the rock here resists wave erosion more than the surrounding shale of the rest of the Monterey. So it juts out and forms a point and reef at this very location. Remember that in geology, nothing is arbitrary. The point is here for a point, and that's the hardness of chert. Because you know what they say, if it's churdy, it's sturdy. Moving down towards our next stop, you'll find an unconformity. Let's pause now here for some unconformity time. Unconformity time. An unconformity represents a break in time where the deposition from one rock to another was interrupted, um, most often by erosion. So what we see here is the Monterey Formation here. This was deposited in the Miocene, let's say over five million years ago. And then above it, we have much more recent Pleistocene sand gravels. 
These are uh, maybe several hundred of thousands of years old, not millions. So there's up to, and if not more than five million years uh, of rock that are missing right here. So it's kind of fun to get to the beach. We gotta go through uh, this, little, uh, this little river. Here we go. Abalone Point is a large rock that juts out into the ocean at the south end of the beach. As you approach the point, notice the vertical striations across the rock. These striations are called columnar jointing, and their presence tells us that what we're looking at is volcanic rock. Lava can form geometric patterns as it cools and contracts, leading to spectacular formations like Devil's Tower in Wyoming and Giant's Causeway in Ireland. While lava at Crystal Cove did not solidify into hexagons, it did form columns as it contracted, leading to the unique appearance of Abalone Point. The rock here is called andesite, which has a sort of blue-gray color. The intrusion of the volcanic andesite into this area heavily disturbed the surrounding rock. Okay, let's see if I can break this down here. Um, I'm positive that that's andesite, at that outcrop at the point. Then over here, everything from like here all the way to where we were earlier at that other point, that's all Monterey formation. Um, so that's all sedimentary material. It's just what's going on in the middle here is actually kind of complicated. So that's what I'm going to try to figure out. Okay, so here's what I got. Um, I don't know, maybe 100 feet north of the andesite. We got a fault right here in the Monterey. Um, so we got some structural deformation going on. Let's take a closer look at the andesite itself. Okay, so we're getting closer to the andesite now. So I'm sure that's the andesite right there. And in trying to find the contact, there's this kind of dark material. It looks different from anything we've seen before and in color, but it's, you can still see some weak layering going on. And um, I went ahead, I grabbed some rocks here. This upper one, that's clearly Monterey. It's from out there. You can see the same color and everything. And this dark colored one is from the, uh, the dark colored outcrop in front of me. And I'm pretty sure that what this dark stuff is, is just uh, Monterey that's been burned through contact metamorphism. It's just, it got heated up when it got close to that andesite when that was uh, magma or lava. So I think we got our contact right here. But I'm gonna look at the andesite in this area just to make sure. At the exact contact between the Monterey Formation and the Andesite, there's a somewhat strange and garbled looking rock. I'm not so sure about this, so take it with a grain of salt, but my interpretation is that this is where mud at the bottom of the ocean sort of fused with lava. There are some rounded rocks in the matrix that might be pillows, puffy orbs of lava that harden into pillow-shaped formations at the bottom of the ocean. No matter the exact details, the 100 foot or so stretch of beach here shows how rocks are transformed through faulting and contact metamorphism by intruding volcanic material. At the opposite end of Crystal Cove, there's an absolutely incredible outcrop of Monterey formation that has been folded into oblivion. If you're an absolute sicko who likes seeing tortured rocks, then this is the stop for you. Folding happens when rocks bend to accommodate stress, but it's unusual for rocks to fold this extremely. The very helpful geology brochure prepared by Dr. Merton Hill and available as a link in the video description interprets these folds as resulting from an underwater landslide before the layers had completely lithified or turned to rock, allowing them to fold so severely. At the base of the cliff there's a sea cave, which at first glance had me a little confused. So this is an awesome sea cave. Uh, it's a little weird though. Normally sea caves have some sort of inherent weakness in the rock around them, most commonly a fault. And the waves will basically preferentially erode that one area along the weaker rock and push back. The stronger rock holds and you end up with a sea cave. Here though, there's, there's no fault that I can see and the rock itself is pretty strong. Um, so I'm a little perplexed by it. My best explanation for this cave is that it has something to do with concretions. At Crystal Cove, you'll occasionally see large boulders eroding out of the cliff that are harder than the surrounding rock. These concretions are thought to form when a foreign object, like waterlogged driftwood, sinks to the bottom of the ocean and builds a microhabitat around it as it decays. 
The organisms attracted to the object eventually die and build a hard shell around it, sort of like how we obtain chert. Anyway, possibly there was a large concretion here that dislodged and left a hole that was widened by wave erosion. So you can see here how the layers sort of open up from the left side of the screen to the right. And there's probably some sort of concretions in here. You can see it looks to be some organic rich uh, material in the middle here. And my guess is that the side of this stuff was relatively weaker and eroded around it. So there you have it. Keep a lookout for amazing geology around you, whether at Crystal Cove or elsewhere. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to Poopy Archaeology for more videos about the past. Okay, not a geology thing, but check it out. Oh my gosh, it's an awesome nest. Hey birds! Whoa!